Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another show. My name is Tyler, and I'm here with Matt, the founder of ORATS. ORATS is an options analytics platform built on top of over 15 years of historical options data. Our dashboard is integrated with Tradier, meaning you can research and discover trades on our platform and then seamlessly send them through to your Tradier brokerage account. Today on the show, uh, we'll share the lessons we learned about short put spreads after running millions of back tests on SPY, IWM, and a bunch of other tickers. We'll also go over two active positions that we have on EWJ and IWM. Matt, if you're ready, do you want to share your screen and get us started? Sure. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, yeah, so we have a, an existing um, trade uh, that's been going on for a while. It started as an iron condor. Uh, it, it moved up towards one of the uh, the legs, and and then we rolled out the unchallenged leg. So if it rolled up, the puts were getting more and more out of money. So we closed them for a nice profit, and then we um, we did another put spread. So uh, maybe you could see here, uh, Tyler and gang, uh, the short put spread. Uh, the cost was we sold it for sixty five cents. Uh, we sold the April 70, 65, and EWJ has since gone up to 71. It's down a bit today. Uh, so we were we were a little bit better at the beginning of the day, but we're still pretty good. So now it's uh, 63 cents for the April with 26 days left and 15 cents. So uh, we're up about 20 cents on that uh, short put spread for e EWJ. Now, we've been teasing our trade journal, so one of the things that we could do is is look at the whole history for EWJ. So uh, we put on a uh, an iron condor. Uh, we, we put on and got out of this one um, quickly, but this is the iron condor that we're that we're looking at. Um, and then we rolled out of that, you know, out of the money 65, 62 put spread that you see here uh, into the 70, 65. And so we still had that going. Um, we were exercised in the call. You know, 50, so when 57 cents in the money. Uh, so we are, so that's a, a, a loss for that one particular, uh, so that's the outflow. Uh, we sold the entire spread for 77 cents. So we're up a bit, you know, so we're up 20 cents in the original and we're up 20 cents on the short put spread. So that's EWJ that we still have going. That's that short put spread is, is still alive. Um, and then we had from last week, we did a double calendar. Uh, so a double calendar. So let's just look at what that looks like from a payoff picture. So uh, we had uh, a, basically a calendar in the uh, puts and a calendar in the call. So they're double peaks and it's kind of gone up towards the call. So that's good. It went in our favor. So uh, you can see that we sold it for 50 or that, excuse me, we purchased calendars two calendars for 54 cents and now uh you know, that's up about 20 cents so 24 cents so that calendar you could tell is going towards this peak here so that's the uh 207 peak uh so we're in a, in a nice spot for that with the stock you know just below 207 three days left on the uh on the march 27 so that'll be nice if that cancels out then we'll really have a nice uh a profit there so um, how does that look, uh, Tyler, for explaining the trades that we have on? Yeah, it's good to see we're uh, continuing to make some good trades here. Uh, that double calendar is one of your favorite trades. We've made it several times over the course of this show. I think this is our third or fourth double calendar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like they've the all been doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, it took me a while to understand the calendars. When, when we, I first started market making, uh, one of the people that started with us was making a good amount of money. And he always thought in calendars. I never thought, I always thought in theoretical values. So it took me a while to figure it out. And, and now I, now I like calendars now. I wish I would have known that back then. Um, yeah. Well, we have uh, several other shows dedicated to the calendars. So if you guys want to learn more about those, we have a few other shows where we dove into those in more detail. Um, but today we're going to look at short put spreads, uh, which are uh, a vertical spread uh, strategy. And we've back tested 
uh, so many of these, and we have a lot to share with you today. So we're excited to get into it. Yeah, great. So um, I'll, I'll go to the back tester, and um, we're going to look at SPY and IWM today. We're looking for just these huge back tests that we do and what we've learned from these large back tests. Um, specifically, you know, what are the best expiration DTE, days to expiration? What are the best deltas? And then uh, as far as when is a good time to exit those? So um, I like, we could rank these on a number of different things. I like to rank uh, based on um, a, this is a custom ranking system where we use, you know, the, the real risk, I think, is your worst month, your worst annual return, and your max drawdown is kind of our uh, denominator. And then, you know, our day-by-day -day average is our is our is um, what we're dividing by the denominator. And so we could see that um, what comes up then is, is we, what we think is the least risky, best return, what I think on risk uh, is measured. So that's, that's what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, div I'm using as a ranking tool, ascending, of course, uh, we could do descending to see the worst ones, but these are the best ones. And then I've narrowed the days to expiration. I mean, there are some very uh, wide short term days and some very long term days, but these are generally the most popular. I put in 15 to 70 days on this short put spread. And then I've uh, also uh, narrowed down the strike deltas uh, to what most people use. So we can look at those. So of those, we see, you know, this is pretty standard. This is what we like to use, you know, 36 days, 33 delta, 15 delta. So you're buying uh, the 15 and selling the 33. Now what we, what we want to look at is also what are the best times to exit? And, um, and then again, this is just for SPY, and we'll look at IWM after this, but this sure looks like uh, they like to get out somewhat quicker uh, from these, you know, 33 Delta is pretty close to the money. Um, here's a 50 Delta that's farther out of the money that they um, don't do anything with. So what I've kind of noticed is the farther out of the money and even longer term, they don't want to do an exit. Uh, they want to ride that one all the way. So. Uh, whereas, you know, when you're seeing like 44, 20, you're going to see some pretty tight stops and profits in order to maximize uh, what, what what I think is kind of a conservative way to rank these. Uh, is that uh, OK so far, Tyler? Yeah, it sounds good. Um, uh, there's a few things we can sort of kind of go over first. Uh, I was thinking we could look at the performance metrics and sort of explain what we're looking for in a short put spread. Like, is this a strategy where we're looking for a really high return with high risk or relatively low risk strategy? Like what are you sort of as a trader, what are you looking for when you're putting on a short put spread strategy? Yeah, well, first, so um, a spread, um, you know, that limits your risk. So if you were to, you know, people sell naked puts, I hate, I've, you know, I've been around too long to sell naked because anything could happen even in market-wide uh, symbols like SPY. And so, uh, you know, I, I like the more conservative approach um, and, you know, the more, more conservative return on risk re approach. And then, so, you know, again, we're looking at, if you read the, the instructional thing here, it says worst monthly return we're minimizing, worst annual return we're minimizing, and the max drawdown, which is peak to valley, uh we're, that's our that's what we want to minimize that so these uh particular strategies you know they may not look like great annual returns from a notional amount but uh again you could look at if we slide over we'll start to th see things like so there's the ones you know 1.75 percent the average daily percent it's in the market you know 99 percent of the time Last year, how did it do? The last five years, how did it do? But you know, here's how did it do during bull markets? That's when these uh, short put spreads do the best. So that's no no surprise there. But the margin um, returns are are quite uh, quite impressive. I think you know thirty percent returns quite good, and that's really how much you need to put up. So 
So that's important. Sharp ratios are, are okay. Um, Shortino, okay. Uh, the volatility is decently low. Max drawdown, you know, 11%. That, that's, you know, again, not that bad. Um, and then it, it, it just goes on and on. The best trade, worst trade, and, and such. So, so those are the types of things that I like to look for. Um, and if the, you don't have any questions on that, Tyler. Yeah, the um, the margin return versus the notional. It's a pretty big, a pretty big difference, especially in the back tester where we use, we show both of the returns. So the margin return, as you see, thirty seven percent, and the notional, it's like one point five or something like that. Yeah, well, pretty big gap there. Uh, yeah, and so can you explain a little bit about why that gap exists and and which of those you want to look at depending on how you're trading? Yeah, definitely. So the annual return uses a the stock price uh, or notional price, as some people say, but it's really the stock price when you open a trade as the denominator. So you know, SPY is five hundred right now or so. So if you make a certain amount, you know, a certain amount of money, then you just divide by the the stock price. Whereas the margin return, that's just uh, how much you you really have at risk. And so, you know, in this example, uh, when we have a certain delta and we're, we're selling a certain delta and buying a certain delta, your your margin or your risk is just the difference between those strikes, you know, plus you get a, a little bit of uh, revenue from from selling it. So that so that's your that's your denominator. So that denominator is much smaller. So your returns become a much, much larger. Uh, based on that. So another reason I like to use spreads is because the margin return usually is higher. For example, if you just sold a naked put, then your margin is is uh, much higher. So um, that's how we uh, that's how we measure the uh, annual margin versus the uh, annual return that's based on a notional or stock price denominator. Great. Yeah. So is it fair to say then we use the notional and the back tester to sort of compare back tests like apples to apples across different symbols and strategies? And then we use the margin return on sort of a per strategy basis if you really yeah. want to look at how much you're risking and, and sort of the graph of performance. And we can pull up a graph of performance here. Yeah. Uh, if you click on one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, the annual return is a lot. Um, more conservative when you use notional. Uh, often, when you're using, uh, you know, stock with with the, with the strategy, you know, your your stock return might be 10, percent but your, and your overlay strategy might be a certain percent. But you want to have those in the same terms, same, so you can add them together and, and understand, you know, what the return is that you're getting from that entire strategy. Whereas on its own. You're really the margin return is really what you're you're getting based on the risk uh, and the, the capital at risk. So um, I like to look at both for for those reasons. And, and if you click on these, uh, as you say, Tyler, um, you can you know you can say that what your percent capital is uh, for this particular trade, uh, whether it's compounded or not, what your starting capital is. But you know, so this particular short put spread. You know, it's got a, a decently high uh, delta um, and, you know, longer term. So, you know, th this has a very high correlation uh, to the stock price. So the strategy is the orange and the stock return uh, is the blue. So you might say, well, you know, the blue is higher than the orange. Well, uh, also what we're seeing is that the the, the volatility is much less on the orange so you could see like the drawdown where COVID happened is much less in, um with the selling the out of the money put spread than you know than you saw in the stock so um you know that's why that that uh, sharp or uh, sortino might be better on this particular strategy so so this is how this looks and then the exit return so i think these are interesting if it goes against you 75%, it tells you to close it. Or if you have a 75% profit, it wants you to close it as well. Roll into another strategy. And you can see this in the, uh, in the, in the now I'm clicked on the trade log. So you can see all the trades that you did, you know, 2023 on, 
Uh, you can see all the all the years that we had it going for this particular test, and you could see uh, you know what happened when you got out, what your profit was, and all. So you, you know you could see that the profit looks like there's a lot of green here. It's a high profit percentage. You go to the performance metrics and see what your win rate was. So you're in the market 99% of the time, and you won uh, 61, 62%. You know, almost two thirds of the time you're winning these trades. So uh, it, it's a uh, it's a strategy, definitely a bullish strategy uh, to be in. Okay, sharp try downs not too not that high since you have a, a stop loss. So you know, I, mean, I think this is a you know decently aggressive strategy for uh, for the short put spread, Tyler. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh, can you go back to that back test real quick and click on it again? Um, sure. If I wanted to see uh, another back test that was very similar but had a different exit trigger, so if I wanted to test maybe a fifty percent stop loss or no stop loss instead of the seventy-five, just to see how that worked, we could do that with the find similar. Right. So if you go to find similar, uh, you could then hold everything constant, like the DTE. Uh, around 36 days, the strike delta is 33.15, uh, strike width, if there's anything there. Um, and you could hold all those constant, and then it will then put all these uh, filters in so you could see all the, you know, how, all the different ones. So if you recall, we had a 75% stop loss, 75% profit target. Now here's, if you were to get out at 50%, that's in second place. Uh, you might say, well, this is higher, but you know, again, we we are looking at things like, um, you know, how much how much movement there is in in the particular. Um, uh, let's see, I, I think I clicked on one, so I have to go back and click off entry triggers. So, um, and oh, yeah, I don't I don't want any of these. So uh, I, again. If you uh, were to use a slightly different stop loss or a slightly different profit target, um, you know, I was looking at this one, you know, you might say, well, this is 1.664, you know, are, how are these sorted? Again, they're sorted by risk, not just uh, total annual return here. So, um, you know, this is, this is good because you could then, you know, I, I, I like this feature a lot, you know, because then you could put it in, uh, you know, a lot. It's, so you, you could see, if you're overfitting or not um, with the stop losses. So, uh, you know, do you want a stop loss or do you not want a stop loss? So here's here's the strategy without a stop loss, uh, 1.75. And then, you know, so you could see, okay, you know, what the stop loss then did was minimize the uh, minimize the drawdowns more. Um, and so that's, that's why the sort, um, you know, so the sort, so it's eighteen percent drawdown, without stop losses, eleven percent width. So, um, yeah. So those, uh, Tyler, those are the similar uh, back tests for the short put spread. So basically, for for spy at least, uh, when you have something a little bit closer to the money, you want to stay on the exit triggers. Um, now, if I clear these uh, these filters, and I add a few, you know, I'll just. Um, I'll just let it go without any, you know, as you, you recall that we had some filters for it, you know, so if you, let me, uh, let me clear out. So some of these have entries in a, in a very small amount of trading. So I'm just going to say none. I want to have more time in the market. So there's 98% of time in the market. So um, one of the things I filtered out was these way out of the money ones, but these actually look, now pretty good you know this is the number one one um you know selling uh 23 delta buying a four delta uh so it, with stop losses in there is is the favorite for spy um what i like to do now though is is you know kind of remember what these were and then head over to iwm uh and see what it looks like over there uh so without any ado so if we go over to iwm so now um, now we're looking at IWM and, and, and what do you notice that the IWM doesn't want you to exit. So the exit triggers are, are much, uh, fewer and far between than in spy. 
and it's kind of a longer term uh, that that uh, IWM likes. So, so basically, what this is saying is for IWM, it's a longer term. So you, you have a longer term, farther out of the money, wider uh, wider type of, of back test that it's like. Now, if you set some of the filters here and say, well, let's compare apples to apples. Let's let's do the, like the fifteen to um, what did I have that at before? Uh, let's just say 60 days. And so then, and, and we had, um, I believe uh, we're selling the 60, so we're selling 15 Delta to 45 Delta. And then, you know, if this were higher too. So now if we filter this down, then we get some more profit uh, taking. Here's a, interestingly enough, uh, a, a, this is a, a shorter term, more at the money, and they either want to take profits or, or have a stop loss. That that's uh, that's optimal. So that so I, I think what you get from this back test is when you step back is is interesting to look at. First of all, um, for this particular return on risk, um, if you're really watching, you know your drawdowns. You know it wants you to trade farther out of the money and it'll let it run its course usually at least in iwm uh and in, in spy uh it's you know closer to the money but having tighter uh profit taking and stop losses so it's pretty interesting uh, uh you know iwm tends to be a higher volatility uh obviously spy is looked at the most uh, a lot of uh a lot of tighter markets so uh you know that could also help with the uh exit triggers how's that sound tyler yeah sounds good i was actually just about to ask before you finish there like the uh, iwm is there a difference between iwm and spy and why you might see this in iwm and not see it in spy you said there was some higher volatility on iwm Right. So, you know, in this case, we're, we're really trying to manage our risk. We, we want to um, we we don't want the drawdowns because that's you know, that's what we're sorting. on. We don't want bad months. We don't want drawdowns uh, and we want, you know, a, a decent return compared to that. And so what is what's the answer in IWM? That's, you know, much more volatile than SPY. What they're saying is, well, in order to do that, you're going to have to go out of the money more. So, you know, we can take a look at it. So that's, you know, this is the look of something that's, you know, almost a, a, a short put that that um, is, is is much farther out of the money. And you could see that the drawdown isn't as great. And then you just you just make little little amounts um, and then, uh, you know, but you, you don't participate like so this was a pretty awesome rally that IWM had. Of course, if you're just selling these out of the money put spreads, you're not going to participate as much. But on these drawdowns, you're not going to lose as, as much generally. So, you know, so clearly, you know, 2008, uh, you, you know, you, you, you did, you know, just a ton better than than the market. But then it uh, the mar then the, the market itself caught you, um, you know, around 2012. And then, you know, has, it's been doing better on, on an absolute return to own the stock. But again, from a. You know, you want you also want to look at sharp ratios. You want to look at uh, you know annual margin return. So the sharp and the and the Sortino at sixty five. You know that's a pretty good uh, sharp ratio. Meaning the return divided by uh, the volatility is pretty good for for that uh, for for these measurements. And the, and the volatility is a lot lower than the stock uh, for this. You know, since you're selling it out of the money uh, out of the money put spread. And we'll just look at a few here. You know, so. You know, you're making $135. You're, you know, you sold at 185 put, one seven, bought a 175 put, did that for a dollar 37, and you know, finished out of the money. So you wrote it all the way. You know, like there's no exits here. So you roll that one all the way. And if you kind of scroll down, you'll see a lot of green. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to win, win, win. But when you lose, you know, um, I don't know if there'd be any even, even losses in in 2024. So I'm just scrolling down, looking at these green and not seeing much loss. You know, obviously, if we go to uh, you know, different month or different year, you're going to see some red coming in. So, the, you know, so there's there's one where you got in at 165 and then it, it, the, st the stock went down to 146. 
through there and so you lost uh 500 while making 60 so uh you know that reward to risk ratio wasn't that good and you can see here it's about six to one um we can average the reward to risk ratios on this uh, particular uh on this particular strategy so so yeah i mean in iwm i mean your question is like you know why the difference right so iwm had a lot more volatility and, um, you know, so selling the out of the money uh, puts, you know, performed a lot better with those drawdowns than, you know, than we saw in SPY. But it, it, I think it's a really interesting uh, comparison to do. So, you know, what they're, what they're saying is, yeah, with, with SPY, you want to sell it a little bit meatier, a little shorter term um, and be on the stop losses, which is which is real interesting. I mean, it's a. You know, this is a pretty different way to, to trade SPY than IWM, you know, just for, you know, for all the volatility in IWM has really changed how you want to approach trading both of these, uh, these symbols are, are a lot different. And I've noticed that just trading them, you know, I, IWM, uh, you know, they seem like they're, they're correlated, uh, but you'll see, you know, you, you'll see a lot of differences when you, you know, it's a lot more volatile and it just really whipsaws a lot more in IWM, which is, you know, so they're saying, well, in that case, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do a little, slightly longer, slightly more out of the money uh, put spread and then just hold on. And, you know, it tends to come back and uh, you tend to get, uh, you know, some higher price way out of the money put spreads that you could sell in IWM. And then you just, you know, again, hold on to it. Whereas in SPY, what this is, the back tests are saying, you know, 5 million back tests run in this case, that you could, you could be a little bit more at the money and a little more aggressive on profit taking and stop losses. Um, and that's, that's the way to maximize this particular return on risk that we're looking at here, Tyler. Yeah, uh, that was a great um clarification sort of you know the differences between IWM and SPY I want to reiterate one of the neat things about our back tester especially when it comes to a highly volatile environment so if you click on the back test again Matt and you go to the trade log I was noticing how a lot of the trades were sort of one after the other see it was placed on January 3rd then the 4th and it sort of just happens one after the other uh, can you explain why we back test it this way and why isn't it just like january 3rd wait for a month and then place the trade on you know late february or late march yeah that's a good observation tyler the, the reason that we're doing it you know almost every day is one we can uh and two you're not going to trade like that but it really gives you a better picture like because you'll have on these trades all the time because what happens if you if you just go um serially like one in one out and then close it one in one out what, what's happening is you know if, if there's a sharp move uh near the end you know it might be so out of the money that it's never going to affect it whereas if you were just putting on a trade uh then it affects it a lot more i don't know if that makes sense but you know if you put on more trades you're going to have a much truer uh back test than if you only do it uh just uh one for one on one off one on one off like we like to have many on at the same time we average the returns and you could get a much better look it's, i think it's misleading if you're if you're not doing that i mean we we do it like you know we could do five days difference but we like to do it as much as we can uh just to show uh so that you know you, you don't have the path dependency uh if you if you had on a, a only one trade at a time so that, yeah, that's a good question yeah, we call it path dependency, right? And so we have blogs and university articles on this as well. Um, but it, it's a really key component of our back tester. It's it's what makes our back tester so comprehensive and and high quality. And uh, it, again, it's sort of like uh, our, our back tester is used, is used for like research, right? Like we're not saying trade this every single day. You know, that's not really a practical. Uh, approach, right? But our back tester is used for researching and, and seeing what uh, strategy outperforms the other. So I, I would use it as a tool for comparing different back tests and, and different strategies. And same thing with the graph, you can sort of see um, how the strategy performs versus the stock. Um, it, it's not like an exact replica of 
how you know we're saying you're gonna do this so you're gonna do this great it's more for research purposes right and uh you, you wouldn't be trading every day the you know the commissions and such would it would be a nightmare to manage but we could manage it in our back tester and then you know you could expect you know with reasonable uh you know a reasonable cadence to put in you should have trades on if you want if you want to get the the returns that are kind of expected in the back test you want to you want to space out you just don't want to like put in one huge trade and not do anything for 50 days or or whatever however many days to expiration you know you want to if you're going to if you're going to try to recreate these back tests you're going to want to be in you don't have to be in every day but you're going to want to have to be in if the stock moves precipitously you you it changes everything so you want to have trades on at, at kind of each level in order to uh you know follow this this particular strategy and that's a very important trading tip matt uh, i think a lot of people would would benefit from that yeah so that's uh that's about it tyler on uh, you know on uh on the short put spreads i mean i think you know these these uh all these back tests, all these uh, that we have in there, you know, it's a it's a gold mine. I mean, it's it's really difficult to run all these. We store them all, and you can come in and check them out, and, and you know, set your filters and try to find you know the best way that's worked historically. It's not always going to work in the future, but uh, and then you could you know set up things to you know trade it, paper trade, and see see how they do. So this is a, a great tool. I've learned a lot from it. Uh, it's driven a lot of my trading um, and, you know, we, we've talked in other uh, shows about the trade ideas and how it ties in. So the trade ideas tie into the best ones and then it just gets the best of the best. So that's a, a real neat uh, tool that we have as well. So that's that's how I like to use uh, all this information, Tyler. Yeah, there's a lot of information in there, Matt. Uh, well, I think we're just about out of time, uh, but if you guys have any questions, uh, you can leave a comment below uh, or email us at support at orats.com. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys again next week, and thank you for um, being on the show. Thanks, Trader. All opinions expressed by Tradier Hub contributors are solely the contributors' opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Tradier nor its affiliates and or subsidiaries. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Hub contributors as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or to follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. The contributors' opinions are based on their own personal research, but neither Tradier nor its affiliates and or subsidiaries warrants its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Any trades or positions discussed or referred to by contributors may or may not be actually live trades or positions. Such information is not intended to be a financial or investment advice. Trade Your Inc. is the parent company of Trade Your Brokerage Inc. Trade Your Brokerage Inc. and Trade Your Inc. are separate entities with their own products and services. Securities products and services are offered through Trade Your Brokerage Inc. Trade Your Brokerage Inc. is an independent subsidiary of Trade Your Inc. All rights reserved. Member FINRA SIPC.